my friend. Your eyes are finally open. Well, actually, more like I. The other socket seems to have formed into a gaping, hungry maw, which is quite the blessing, I think. Unlike your first mouth, this one seems to have all of its teeth. Looks like you'll be eating solid food again. My friend, what's wrong? You look... confused. Is everything alright? You don't remember anything? Huh, that new mouth of yours probably required some space. And to remove some unnecessary bits from within your skull. But no worries. Although you have literally lost your mind, you have not lost your bestest friend. That friend, uh, being me. A friend who has been by your side for years, and has never once used you as a human shield. A fact I emphasize in case an errant memory resurfaces that says otherwise. Anyway, let me explain to you the wonderful history of the place we call home. One thousand years ago, in a land that was once called Central Europe, there was a war called the Black Powder Conflict, where ruling powers that called themselves nations fought against an ancient general known as Napoleon. They fought him for reasons that I'm sure were important to them at the time, but as they fought, they didn't realize that a holy being was growing beneath their feet, the living god known as the Root. Where the root came from, no one truly knows. Perhaps it flew down from the sky. Perhaps it was always deep within the earth, waiting for the right time to rise. Perhaps a soldier had a particularly bad bowel movement. Whatever the origin, the root took well. Root. Running rampant across the world as a serpentine network of fibrous tentacles sucked the life from the ground, poisoned the seas, and fouled the air. And as it did so, the nations of the world fought each other even harder fighting desperately for any lands untainted by its glorious touch. A thousand years of conflict that left behind broken fortifications, rusty weapons of war, and tides of corpses buried under every step you walk across this land. Now there is only the county of Sist. Actually, that's not quite true. There are a few other counties nearby, and perhaps lands beyond, but they are unimportant to the glorious story I'm trying to tell. And honestly, they are not really worth talking about. Sis is a land of muddy marshland covered in thick fog, upon which are a few towns and villages where its bellicose and grumbling denizens live in cobbled together fortifications and slowly sinking slums. It can be a bit harsh living in these dots of civilization, but each town and village has found ways to survive and even thrive. There's Geats, the biggest of the towns with actual walls, and even a few cobbled streets that its citizens are fairly proud of. The town of Beer, famous for its pubs where its inhabitants complain about their betters. Gurp, with its raised huts where its stilt-wearing denizens comb the marshlands for relics of the past. Crotz, with its rather unsafe but profitable mines. Slack, with its smoke-billowing forges. And Shellwood, with its delightful mucus farms. But you may ask, how can these people live? Didn't I just say everything was poisoned by the root? That's where the blessing of the root comes in, my friend. For the root blesses us pitiful humans with the fruits of his bounty. The fruits being, uh, tubers, carrots, turnips, and other root vegetables that we are blessed enough to eat. And unlike tubers of the past, these fruits of the root contain extra bits like semi-formed organs, cartilage, and bones, giving you plenty of protein and calcium to go along with those carbohydrates. The taste isn't great or good, but it is, um, edible. But the fruits of the root are the only thing you will find in the marshland. There is also animal life as well, although these creatures are also part of the root. You see, my friend, the root has, over the centuries, consumed all forms of animal life, and rebirthed those creatures into new glorious forms. Root-born animals that take on aspects of those ancient beasts. Perhaps a bit more aggressive than their mimic ancestors, but it only takes losing a finger or two to learn to avoid their jagged teeth. But animals of yore aren't the only creatures birthed by the root. Some are creatures that actually mimic human life. The most common of these are the rootlings, squawk creatures who tend to putter around the marsh performing all sorts of mischief. They are usually just a nuisance in small numbers, but can pose a danger in a horde. There are also creatures known as rootborn, which are thankfully rare. They are powerful and aggressive bees that prowl around the foothills and marshes, moaning to themselves in an ancient tongue. Many villages even worship them as minor deities, although whether these rootborn acknowledge this worship I couldn't tell you. Now the tubers birthed by the root not only provide food, they also give blessings. Glorious mutations that, as the years go by, slowly change people to forms that bring them closer to the root. Many fear these changes at first, but over time, 
they begin to braise as spasms of rooty growths that assault their bodies seemingly at random. But even more blessed than the mutations are the visions. Visions that allow us to understand the Root's divinity, encouraging all who consume it to spend time worshipping and caring for our god Leviathan, devoting our lives to tending and harvesting tubers for their mutating gifts. Before I continue, I should say that the Root is not the only thing that has survived to the present day. There are still trees, although they seem to be fewer and fewer in number every generation, and on occasion, one can even see a flower grow although it usually has a very short-lived and pitiful existence. But one form of life that seems to have thrived alongside the root are mushrooms. The mushrooms seem to feed upon the root, and take aspects of its divinity within themselves. Although the effects of these mushrooms aren't as profound as those provided by the root, I still suggest you take great care when gathering mushrooms for your evening meal. Otherwise, you might have some, um, unexpected side effects. Now, as I said, the Root gives us glorious visions, but we are all simple mortals, and can't possibly understand its divine mind. How can we know for sure which of the tubers grown from its holy form is truly the most holy? This leads to numerous cults and holy orders dedicated to a particular root vegetable growing in every town, village, and homestead across Sist. Its denizens decorating their possession in as many root-themed icons, relics, pendants, banners, and tokens as they can fit, prestelitizing the holiness of the particular tuber to any who would listen. This devotion can lead to violence, as cults will often go to war to enforce their beliefs. Hell, it's not even uncommon for two cults who worship the same tuber to have conflict, as both sides will have different interpretations of the nature of this tuber's divinity. And when the call to war comes, these cults grab stockpiles of relic weapons of days gone, and march in columns under fluttering banners against an enemy who dares besmirch their tuber. It is truly a glorious sight. The head of any regiment is usually known as a Toph. Individuals whose glorious forms are dipped head to toe in the heraldry of their regiment, and have extensive mutations displayed for all to see. Whether they lead through charisma, faith, or pure dumb luck, they inspire their troops from the front, or the back, or sometimes with a well scented letter sent from several miles away. It really depends on the Toph. Following just behind the Toph are their toadies, sniveling sub commanders that fawn over the Toph on their crusade each one attempting to curry favor with the Toph in the most egregious ways possible. I'm sure some of them wouldn't blink an eye sacrificing their soldiers, if it meant the Toph might just glance their way. And beneath the Toph and their toadies are the various soldiers under their command. Fodder form the core of most regiments, malnourished saps who are gathered in tight order, and are inspired by pounding drums and loud speeches dying droves for their betters. Brutes are the fighting elite, well-fed and heavily armored warriors who are especially dedicated to the cause, most likely because they are well-fed and heavily armored. Chaff are the lighter skirmishing troops of any regiment. They are remarkably terrible shots, but their ability to distract and confuse opponents can prove invaluable. Whelps are riders who, besides riding onto battle on their steeds, also pick off the starving, feeble, and cowardly amongst their own forces, ensuring the regiment as a whole remains fighting fit and motivated. Bastards are well, um, actually... Bastards, the illegitimate offspring of the countless toadies that follow the Toph, eager to prove their worth by hurtling headlong into the most gruesome combats on their steeds, or parents who probably don't even bother remembering their names. And occasionally, these regiments will be lucky enough to find a stump gun, a piece of ancient artillery that spews out cannonballs that turns their opponents into masses of pulped flesh. Now as I said, these regiments are usually tied to a cult, and there are many cults that roam these lands. Many of the cults have been founded and disappeared over the years, but there are a few that have stuck around longer than most. Strangling Harry's wretched recruits is a cult led by, as you can guess by the name, Strangling Harry. Although he does have a tendency to strangle those who annoy him, his real claim to fame is his gift as a trainer. Those who survive his tutelage become much more capable soldiers. And they should, because anyone who can survive his rootling obstacle course has probably seen the worst the marshlands has to offer. The Slug's Laments are famous for their grogs, fighters who are so irate, bitter, and hateful that they will march into the line of fire just to beat you to death with their rifles. Much of their attitude probably has to do with their toffs, who tend to be fashionably late to any conflict. Todd of Todd's Folly was once a dashing cavalry officer who, after a heavy night's nice carousing, decided to lick a particularly oddly shipped radish for a bet. Over the course of about a week, he rapidly mutated until he became a lumpy humanoid toad. 
you would think that his new form would be a detriment. But for whatever reason, his charisma has only increased, as he continues to find followers despite his many, many defeats. I will admit though, he is pretty adorable. The Fungivorous Herd uses a swarm of livestock to trample over their enemies in a massive stampede. A surprisingly effective battle tactic, if a bit dangerous. If they don't properly feed the herd, the various root animals may choose to eat their masters to fill their appetites. The followers of the Grand Bombard have somehow uncovered a massive artillery piece from ancient times. It is a powerful device that makes a stump gun look like a slingshot, and they are so skilled in its use that only a few of their crewmen lose their lives with every shot. The Brotherhood of Greed are cannibals who consider themselves gourmands on a delicious pilgrimage to taste the various rooty mutations across Cyst. The fact that those mutations are attached to living, breathing people being of secondary concern. Every town and village in Cyst has at least one root shrine, a place to properly venerate their chosen tuber. But the procession of woe marches with theirs, a tide of frothing zealous who kill all who stand in their way in honor of their carriage-bound holy tuber. The Red Ribbon Society are a club of haughty horticulturalists who believe only they know how to properly grow the finest tubers from the root. They constantly have competitions that require them to test various forms of soils and fertilizers to birth the most blessed root vegetables. And if this quest requires materials owned by someone else, well, competition requires sacrifice. The Feast of Charybdis are famed for their writers known as Scuttlers, individuals who have tamed the massive crabs of the lower marshes. They like to drag unfortunate souls through the mouths of their mounts, watching with delight as their crustaceans rip apart their foes with their merciless maws. The Knights of Sherwood are an order of ancient knights who march, no, slide, into battle on their precious snail steeds. Although you would think them an easy target due to their speed, they are surprisingly hard to put down, and those snails can be surprisingly quick if they spy a particularly edible enemy. The Aunt's Ascendant are led by two elderly spinsters whose words are as damaging as the bricks they throw from on high. Their observation balloon followed by worshippers and adoring sightseers, who love seeing the old women cause both physical and emotional pain on their enemies. The leech lovers are head over heels in love with each other, and wish to share their love with everyone around them, a love that is usually unreciprocated, as most don't appreciate being sucked dry by one of their infamous kisses. The Uprising of the Laos are a cult dedicated to hunting down aristocrats and laying them low to free the people. A worthy goal, if there were any aristocrats left to hunt. Thankfully, this cult learned that the label of aristocrat can be given to anyone, especially people they dislike. St. Alame's Rocket Batteries are a cult of engineers and pyromaniacs. They love loud noises and violent explosions, and proudly display the missing fingers and limbs they receive pursuing such a divine task. The Temple of Swelling serve the Swollen One, a fairly malevolent and mobile tuber that is as likely to kill one of its followers as it is to kill one of the cult's enemies. Well, my friend, hopefully that helps you reacquaint yourself with the world you're currently in. Now come. The regiment is ready to march, and your space in the line is ready for you to boldly march in the direction of the enemy while I bravely march right behind you. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the lore of Turnip 28, a darkly humorous game taking place a thousand years in the future where mutated remnants of humanity only really care about whose root vegetable is best. If you're interested in the game, the rules are actually free on their Patreon, which I put in the link down below. And rather recently, they just had a very successful Kickstarter where they were gonna basically create various uh, miniatures based on the universe. Go also link down below, give it a check and see some of the beautifully body horrific designs they have there. I think you might enjoy a few of them. Anyway, if you liked this video, please like, subscribe, comment, press the little bell so you never know whenever I post. And if you're inclined, please, please, please uh, send a little money over to my Patreon or my coffee account. The extra money gives you a chance to work on these stories that I love. Anyway, thanks for listening slash watching, and uh, see you next time.